when the Jena mathematician and physicist Ernst Ave formulated his pioneering theory of optical image formation back in 1871 and later became a partner of Carl Zeiss, he also became an entrepreneur. This was followed by years of construction and expansion in which Abe, together with Otto Schott and Carl Zeiss, founded a glass laboratory. He gradually evolved his own corporate philosophy founded on scientific progress, qualified employees and responsible corporate governance as the basis of business success. Abe aimed to secure the success of the two flourishing companies over the long term, unhindered by personal ownership interests. This prompted him to create the Carl Zeiss Foundation on May 19, 1889, in honor of his deceased partner. Ernst Abe, the Zeiss Herr Roderich Zeiss, and some years later, Otto Schott, transferred all their shares in the business to the foundation. This made the foundation the sole owner of the two companies. In 1896, Abe created a statute in which he stipulated the goals and objectives of the foundation and defined the rights of its employees. The profit generated by the two companies was to be used for investments in their future and in social benefits for their employees. The remaining income was to be used to promote science at the University of Jena and for social and cultural institutions. Ernst Abbe's statute is one of the most outstanding documents in German economic and social history. His corporate constitution is focused on people and the community on a lasting basis. These guidelines have remained essentially unchanged to this very day. Abbe was far ahead of his times. From the eight-hour working day to a company pension, the employee rights he introduced were unique for the period in which he lived. However, he was not interested in charitable deeds, but in legal security. This was nothing short of revolutionary for many of his contemporaries. Society also benefited from the Carl Zeiss Foundation. Top priority was given to the promotion of science at the University of Jena, with which both companies closely collaborated in their research and development activities. Outside the university, funds from the foundation also enabled the setup of many social facilities for Jena's rapidly growing population. Funding of this magnitude was only possible because the two companies generated outstanding earnings. Around 1890, Zeiss and Schott became established as global market leaders in the fields of microscopes and optical glass. With the setup of new business divisions and increasing high volume production, the two companies developed into large industrial enterprises. Zeiss and Schott have had an international focus right from day one. The first sales branches were founded outside Germany at an early stage. The two companies, and therefore also the foundation, survived the First World War and the world economic crisis with relative success. However, the Second World War and its consequences were to shake both companies to the core. After their rise to power, the National Socialists gradually integrated the foundation and its companies into their economic regime despite initial resistance. As a manufacturer of products important to the war cause, the companies were targeted by Allied air raids. During the war, foreign workers, war prisoners and forced laborers were employed. American troops marched into Jena in April 1945. When withdrawing from Thuringia in June 1945, the Americans took leading employees and important documents with them to the West. The Soviet occupying forces dismantled major parts of the Jena factories. The expropriation of the Jena companies and their conversion into state-controlled enterprises meant that the Carl Zeiss Foundation in Jena lost the very basis of its existence. And we had only that which we had in the Köpfen. Aber das, meine Damen und Herren, 
dieses geistige Kapital, das ist das Entscheidende.